This is Eagle. Eagle is a rocket I made with the goal of propulsively launching and landing, much like the SpaceX Falcon 9. I spent the last two and a half years doing this, and let me tell you, it was much more challenging than I had originally thought. Throughout the process, I run into a plethora of unforeseen obstacles, which resulted in a whopping 30 failed attempts before I was finally successful. This video is all about Eagle and how it works. Eagle was made the same way as Hussar and Mach, just taking two 3-inch body tubes and coupling them together. The majority of the rocket's components were mounted as low as possible to keep the center of mass low as well. This way, when the rocket fell, it would revert to a vertical position instead of the horizontal position as seen at Hussar and Mach. The plan was to build it like a tank because I anticipated probably a couple failures along the way. All the necessary components for the legs were first drawn out in CAD. To give the rocket a good chance of landing, I gave the legs a low and wide profile. The applicable pieces were then 3D printed and later epoxied to the carbon fiber struts that were pre-cut based on the CAD drawings. To ensure that the legs were mounted to the frame with maximum strength, the top ring was epoxied and screwed in place. The bottom ring, however, had an inner slot that allowed the tube to slide into place and be secured from both sides and the bottom. That way, if the rocket hit the ground hard, the screws wouldn't rip through the tube, causing structural damage. The legs are a foldable design that are powered by rubber bands that lock into place after deployed. When the legs are stored, they are held in place by an additional rubber band. That rubber band gets burned away by the nichrome wire controlled by the flight computer, and then the legs will spring out and lock into place. At first, I ran into a couple challenges where the upper strut would come out of the guides, which ended up in leg deployment failure. Luckily, with my friend Chad's suggestion, we were able to wrap tape around the legs to ensure that the strut did not come out of place. Eagle's gimbal is able to articulate plus or minus five degrees in both axes. By using smaller servos and moving them closer to the center of the gimbal, I was able to avoid the window cutouts that had caused structural instability for the previous rocket models. The gimbal's components are 3D printed using PLA and then later screwed together. I ended up just friction fitting the two motors together using a coupler with an E-match sandwich in between. This turned out to be incredibly reliable as the motor was always ejected before the landing motor could get up the peak thrust. This design enabled us to quickly refuel and relaunch the rocket in the field, which contributed to the iterative design process. At the heart of Eagle is Mustang, a flight computer I designed, created, and programmed that was responsible for coordinating all flight events. Mustang is based off the Teensy 4.1 architecture and has been my go-to flight computer ever since Hussar. So, how does it land? While watching old flight footage, I realized that TVC Flight Up is actually very close to TVC landing. The block of code required to have a rocket go up stable is actually the same to require it to come down stable as well. The trick is all about timing that second stage ignition. The rocket knows its altitude by integrating the adjusted vertical acceleration twice. I decided to do it this way because my flight computer didn't have a GPS unit on it and I didn't trust the noise in the barometer enough to include it into the calculations. To find that landing burn altitude, I altered my offline simulation to model landing dynamics and used that to estimate an appropriate burn altitude for the first flight. With all that squared away and the landing burn altitude programmed into the flight computer, we were ready to launch Eagle.
While the rocket was great at maintaining that vertical position during landing, and the secondary burn was successful in the first couple of flights, the timing was horribly off. As we kept flying, more and more problems started manifesting, but they can all be simplified down to a handful of issues. Take these three attempts for example. They all have the same motor and control gains, but achieve different apogees. As a result, a static burn altitude won't work. We needed something dynamic. To address this, I started dropping the rocket at different altitudes in the simulation and having it land. I then took these burn altitudes, plotted them against Apogee, and got a perfect linear relationship between the two. As a result, when the rocket reaches Apogee, it calculates its own burn altitude. Looking back at those three flights, you'll also notice that they become unstable on the way up due to axial spin, then flip at Apogee. That flip was started and caused some altitude calculation issues. To address that, I printed two weights to weigh the rocket down so it wouldn't coast up as far, and also to cover the window to block airflow moving into the body of the rocket, which was causing that spin. As a result, we started getting much closer. The final piece of the puzzle came down to software. There's a 50 millisecond transition time between the pad idle and TVC flight state where no altitude calculations were taking place. By fixing this so that the calculations started here meant that the rocket's altitude calculations were finally working right. As a result, this finally happened. So as cliche as it is, I think I finally get to say that the Eagle has landed. And also don't worry, since I kind of overestimated how many attempts that would take, we got some more motors left. So when it warms back up, I think we're going to have some more fun with it and see if we can launch it a few more times to increase that reliability just a little bit more. To do that, I wanted to add some dampeners to the legs as well as further increase the deployment reliability considering on the successful land one of the struts popped its way out of place, though not enough to cause any real major issue. So on that note, that's all I got for you today. Thank you for all your support. I sincerely appreciate it. Also wanted to extend a thank you to Joe from BPS Space as his scout program was the inspiration behind all of this. So thank you, Joe. And of course, a huge thank you to my friends, family, and fiance for putting up with all my rocket questions these last couple of years and for getting up at the crack of dawn to launch these things. Y'all are awesome. I couldn't have done it without you. So with that, thank you so much for watching. My name's Mark, this is Project Horizon, and I'll see you next time.